Hey everybody, it's Lon Seib and we are back with the NVIDIA Shield TV for an update. Unfortunately, the video today isn't about what's being added, but rather what's being taken away. You may have heard by now that Game Stream, which is a feature that allows you to stream games from an NVIDIA GPU equipped gaming PC to your Shield, is going to be phased out around February of 2023. Now, NVIDIA announced this change the other day on their website and they gave gamers a couple of options for alternatives. One is to use their GeForce Now service. We've covered that here in the past. That is a paid subscription service that allows you to stream games that you bought on Steam, Epic, and Ubisoft to your NVIDIA Shield or other devices. It works really well. The problem, though, is that, first of all, it's a paid subscription service, and streaming from your own PC is free. But secondly, Games that you own may not be available on GeForce Now because the developers don't allow NVIDIA to stream them. They actually put it into the licensing terms of the game that you're purchasing from Steam and other platforms. So the library is not as extensive as it might be through this game stream feature. Now the other option that NVIDIA suggests gamers look at is the Steam Link app. That is available for free and it connects your Shield or other devices to a gaming PC running Steam over the network. And it works pretty well, it supports 4K gaming, but not all games that you might own are in Steam. Now you can add the games to Steam manually and stream them that way, but it's kind of a clunky solution, especially given how good the game stream experience was. Now the way it works is that the GeForce Experience app running on the PC goes through and collects all the games on your system. So for example, I've got Crackdown 3 here running on my gaming laptop that came from Game Pass. Doom Eternal I had in my Steam library along with No Man's Sky. And Fortnite is in my Epic Games library. Yet the GeForce experience running on my PC found all of those games. And what's really cool is that when I boot one of the games up, it automatically optimizes the settings for what I am streaming to. So right now, uh, this game is running at a 16 by nine aspect ratio. I think it's running at 1080p. The 4K can get a little clunky every once in a while to set up. But when I go back to that gaming laptop, which is a 16 by 10 display, it will go right back to the settings I had before. So here it just changed the settings for the screen I was attaching to in the game automatically on boot. And that is something that it will do not only for Steam games, but uh, the Epic and the Game Pass games as well. Basically, any game that GeForce Experience can work with, it will optimize in this way. And it just took one layer of complexity out of the mix here for me, which is why I loved using it from time to time. Even though I wasn't a frequent user, it was nice to know that I could boot up a game on my television, have it work great in that in-home streaming environment, and then get everything back to where I had them set before I did that activity. So it can adjust the settings pretty much on the fly here. Now the only supported clients for GameStream were the NVIDIA Shield devices. That includes the TV box here, which is the last surviving NVIDIA Shield device, but it also included their handheld, which was the first Shield, along with their defunct tablet. And that was it. But there's an app called Moonlight that I think is probably a bulk of the GameStream usage out there that connects to this game stream protocol and allows you to run game stream on phones, tablets, and other devices that are not shields, but it's been an unofficially supported thing. Nvidia never shut it down, but it wasn't something that was supported. And now Moonlight is in danger because once they turn off this feature on the shield, I would imagine they're not gonna keep it in the software on the PC side any longer, which is what Moonlight, of course, relies upon. And they've got a pretty extensive FAQ up on their GitHub here, and they're giving users some instructions as to what to expect next for Moonlight. Now, Moonlight does not plan to shut its doors after NVIDIA shuts them out. They are putting development resources into something called the Sunshine Project, which is another open source activity. And this aims to create a GeForce Experience compatible server that is free and open source, and it will run on more than just Windows. They're planning Linux and Mac OS support, and it's going to support AMD and Intel GPUs in addition to the NVIDIA ones. 
So we may end up with something better uh, after sunshine sees a little bit more development. It does work now, but I understand it's very hard to get working. So I think it's going to take a little bit of time for this to get a little more cooked here before it's ready to be a viable alternative. But if they really start putting a lot of effort into this, perhaps by February, there will be a workable solution, not only for your NVIDIA Shield, but also for the devices that you're currently running Moonlight on. There are, of course, other commercial alternatives like Parsec and Rainway. So you're not going to have no way to stream to your Shield after this. But I think the best option is the one that we're unfortunately losing. Now, my gut on this is that there's not all that many people actually using this feature. And those who are, are likely doing it through Moonlight and not through an NVIDIA Shield, which was their intent with the feature in the first place. So I think that's probably why they're getting rid of it. And of course, they're trying to get more people to sign up for GeForce Now that has more ongoing revenue potential. All that said, I am very pleased with the fact that this device, seven years later, is still being supported with regular updates. I think this is probably the longest supported Android device on the market here, especially as we enter year eight with this. And this original 2015 is still getting those updates pushed down to it. It's unfortunate, though, that we are losing features here. And if you remember, a few months ago, we looked at how they changed the interface to put ads into it, which were not there before. So there are some things that are degrading a bit from a user perspective, both in the loss of features and the addition of advertising. But this is still a killer streaming device for home theater in particular. And one of the things that I'm hoping to see in the coming year is a new NVIDIA Shield device because although we have seen some refreshes of the hardware over the last seven years, it's still running on the same essential platform. So we'll have to keep an eye on this and hope that NVIDIA sticks with their TV box because this is certainly a favorite among enthusiasts. So I will come back to this topic once Sunshine gets a little more baked and when it's ready, we'll take a look and see how this alternative solution works, not only on the Shield, but on other devices too. That's going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Brian Parker, Chris Allegretta, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Logic KGR. Tom Albrecht and Amda Brown. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.